Welcome back for the third of my League Regions Breakdowns, today with the Asgarnia region. As always, this breakdown will not be covering strategies for the area, uses for the relics or combat masteries. There will be a playlist of the previous videos on screen to check out if you haven't already, and you can skip ahead to the relevant chapters below. By picking the Asgarnia region, you'll be given access to the entire Kingdom of Asgarnia, the island of Intrana, the Pest Control Islands, and the Troll Country to the north. Notable areas include Falador, Burthorpe, Port Sarim, Remington, Tavoli, Goblin Village, the ruins of Camdazal, Ice Mountain, and the Dwarven Mine. You will also receive the God Wars Dungeon, the Troll Stronghold, and the Void Knights Outpost. These will allow you to access the Crafting Guild, Heroes Guild, Rogue's Den, Mining Guild, Warriors Guild, and the Tavoli Dungeon also. By picking the Asgania region, the Merlin's Crystal, My Arm's Big Adventure, Below Ice Mountain, and Dwarf Cannon quests will be automatically completed. This will also automatically unlock the Edgar's Ruse, Troll Stronghold, Death Plateau, and the Feud quests, which are prerequisites for the automatically unlocked quests. You will be able to complete the Frozen Door mini quest with only Asgania unlocked, not requiring the completion of Desert Treasure 1, which is normally required to start the quest. The quests, The Black Knight's Fortress, Doric's Quest, Enlightened Journey, Grim Tales, Hero's Quest, Knight's Sword, Pirate's Treasure, Foreseen of Interest, Recruitment Drive, Witch's House, Witch's Potion, X Marks the Spot, and the mini quest, Skippy and the Mogas, will all be completable with only the Asgania area unlocked. The recipe for Disaster Subquest, to free the Goblin Generals will also be available so long as Kandoran, Mauritania, Fremenic, or Valamor regions are chosen also, as they are required to start the quest. The following quests are also completable with specific region combinations which include Asgarnia. A Tale of Two Cats requires the Desert. Defender of Varrock requires both the Desert and Fremenic regions. The Slug Menace requires both the Desert and Kandoran to complete. While the quests Another Slice of Ham, The Giant Dwarf, and the recipe for disaster subquest for freeing Sir Amic Vars all require the Fremenic region. With both Fremenic and Kandoran, you can complete the Between a Rock quest, Forgettable Tale, and Land of the Goblins. By picking Asgarnia alongside Kandoran, you can complete the Biohazard, Corsair Curse, Hand in the Sand, Scorpion Catcher, and Troll Romance quests, as well as the recipe for disaster subquests to free the Mountain Dwarf and the Lumbridge Guide. With the Kurend region, you'll be able to complete the Bear Your Soul mini quest, and with the region of Mauritania, you'll be able to complete the Animal Magnetism quest. With Mauritania and the Wilderness, you can complete the Devious Mines and the Wanted quests. And finally, with Valamor unlocked, you'll be able to complete the Ethically Acquired Antiquities quest also. Of those quests available, the Black Knight's Fortress quest will be automatically completed already if you pick any of the Desert, Kandoran, or Fremenic regions. Dorex quest will be auto-completed by the Desert or Fremenic regions. Enlightened Journey will be completed by the region of Kandoran. Hero's quest will be completed with the Fremenic region. Pirate's Treasure will be completed with the Mauritania region. Recruitment Drive will be completed by either of the Desert or Fremenic regions. And X marks the spot will be completed by unlocking either the Kurend or Fremenic regions. If you want to do any of those quests, make sure to pick Asgarnia first. For the quests which require multiple regions, A Tale of Two Cats and Animal Magnetism will be completed automatically alongside picking the Fremenic region. Biohazard will be completed with the Fremenic or Tyranwin regions. And finally, both the quests Devious Mines and Wanted will be automatically completed by either the Desert or Fremenic regions. By unlocking Asgarnia, the Falador Diary is available to be completed. The Easy Diary has no automatically unlocked tasks. The Medium Diary will have the task to visit the Port Sarim Rat Pits automatically complete, while the Hard Diary will automatically complete the task to recharge your prayer in the Port Sarim Church while wearing full proselyte. Finally, within the Elite Diary, you will not be required to purchase a white two-handed sword from Survivin. For Asgarnia, the following items are boosted by the League's Drop Multiplier, presumed to be up to five times at the highest rate. The Bronze through to Rune Defenders, which are dropped from the Cyclops on the top floor of the Warriors Guild, will be increased from a drop rate of 1 in 50 each, up to a rate of 1 in 10 at the maximum multiplier. The Dragon Defender will be boosted from a 1 in 100 drop to a 1 in 20 drop from the Cyclops in the basement of the Warriors Guild. From Cerberus, the drops of the Primordial, Pegasian, and Eternal Crystals will go from a 1 in 512 drop rate to a rate of 1 in 102. 
The Smoldering Stone, also dropped by Cerberus, will similarly go from a rate of 1 in 512 to 1 in 102. The Smoldering Stone drop will also be boosted from Hellhounds, from a 1 in 32,768 drop rate to a 1 in 6,553 rate. From Commander Ziliana in the God Wars dungeon, the Saradomin Sword will be boosted from 1 in 127 up to 1 in 25. The Saradomin's Light will go from 1 in 254 to 1 in 50. The Armadil Crossbow and the Saradomin Hilt will be boosted from 1 in 508 to 1 in 101. Continuing with the God Wars bosses, General Grador will drop the pieces of the Bandos armor at a boosted rate from 1 in 381 to 1 in 76. He will also drop the Bandos Hilt from a rate of 1 in 508 to a rate of 1 in 101. Grill Sutsaroth will have the drop rates for the Steam Battle Staff and Zamorakian Spear boosted from 1 in 127 down to 1 in 25, while the Staff of the Dead and Zamorak Hilt will be boosted from 1 in 508 to 1 in 101. Kriara will have all armor pieces reduced from a rate of 1 in 381 to a rate of 1 in 76 per piece while the Armadil Hilt will be boosted the same as the other Hilts, from 1 in 508 to 1 in 101. All of the three God Sword Shards required to make a God Sword will be boosted from the God Wars bosses from a rate of 1 in 254 per piece to a rate of 1 in 50 at the highest rate of boosts. While in the God Wars dungeon, Nexus drops will be boosted also. The Zarite Van Braces will be increased from a rate of 1 in 172 to a rate of 1 in 34, while the Torva armor and Nihil horn will be boosted from a drop rate of 1 in 258 to 1 in 51. Finally, the Ancient Hilt will fall from a 1 in 516 rate to a rate of 1 in 103. Outside of God Wars, the Draconic Visage from Skeletal Wyvern will be boosted from a rate of 1 in 10,000 to 1 in 2,000. The Dragon Boots dropped from Spiritual Mages will be increased from 1 in 128 to 1 in 25. And the Whisperer Drops will also be boosted. The Chromium Ingot will go from 1 in 170 to 1 in 34. The Bellator Vestige and Soul Reaper Axe Pieces from 1 in 512 to 1 in 102. And the Virtus Ropes will drop from 1 in 1536 to 1 in 307 at the highest rate. All four of the Soul Reaper Axe Pieces have been confirmed to drop from any of the Desert Treasure 2 bosses and will not drop duplicates until the four pieces have all been received. For boosted activities, the Warrior Guild tokens at the Warrior Guild, the Void Knight commendation points from Pest Control, Carpenter points from Mahogany Homes, Golden Nuggets at the Motherlode Mine, Unidentified Minerals at the Mining Guild, and pieces of the Rogue's Outfit will all be boosted in Asgarnia, up to eight times the usual rate. Finally, Black Dragons, Blue Dragons, Hellhounds, Skeletal Wyverns, Spiritual creatures and trolls will all be available from any Slayer Master once Asgarnia is unlocked. Upon the completion of the Porcine of Interest quest, Sour Hogs will also become available. Finally, in the region of Asgarnia, the Echo Boss available will be the Echo version of Cerberus. It will require 91 Slayer and a Hellhound's task to receive the drop of an Echo Orb from Cerberus. However, then the Echo variant will be available off-task. The Echo Cerberus will have a chance to drop the Dog Sword, a variant God Sword with a special attack which combines the effects of all five regular God Swords, requiring 50% of your special attack energy. That's it for today. Leave a like if this has been helpful to you and subscribe to see future videos. Next time will be the Fremenic Province. See ya!